younger in their 20s right now. Let them know about House Party. Yeah, I mean, it was a wonderful, wonderful experience. I'll never forget, I was, I think I was home working on a Godfather solo James Brown album. Yeah, I was working on his mm -hmm. album because Full Force, we're the only ones blessed to write and produce the entire album for the Godfather of Soul. Cool. Mm -hmm. And, um, and uh, uh, our co-producer at the time, Robert Ford Jr., uh, he called me and said, Paul, I got a friend of mine, he's a Howard University graduate, and he wrote this little script, and his, uh, in the script it says, the bullies were muscle-bound, jerry curl wearing guys like Full Force. Mm -hmm. So that was in the script. So mm -hmm. Robert said, well, Reggie, why audition? Why don't you just get Full Force? He said, I don't want to get Full Force. I work with Full Force. He said, okay. <laughs> so I got a, so he told me he was gonna call. So Reggie called kind of nervous, hey man, my name is Reggie Hudlin. I did this, did a few music, got the script, and that, yeah. And uh, we're always open-minded. We've always been, that, that's from our parents. And I said, Reggie, just send it over, man. Let me take a look at it. I read it, I read some of it, I read part of it, and I said, okay, <laughs> this is interesting, because I it come it brings us in right in the beginning. So I did what I normally do in situations like that. I called Lou, because Lou has been doing uh, videos and, 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 and film with us ever since we were kids. I'm talking about 10, 11, with projectors and all that, all that kind of thing. So I knew that was his wheelhouse. I sent it to Lou, and I went to the gym. I said, Lou, holler at me when you call back, tell me what you think. And Lou started reading it, he said, yo, Paul, yo, B, then, yo, I mean, this is crazy, I think mm -hmm. we do some wonderful things. So B was Pee Wee, and Lou was Zilla. Wow. So, mm -hmm. so Lou said, yo, B, I'm going to change roles with you. I'm going to be Pee Wee. I'm going to talk like this throughout the whole movie, throughout the whole thing. That's going to be my thing. <laughs> you know? And Paul, you always stepped. You're the lead guy anyway. And that was it. So it was wonderful. The energy. I mean, we wrote everything that you see us do in the movie. We rewrote wow. everything. Everything. We've been saying I smell, I smell for years. You wow. know? And Lou was always <laughs> saying, well, you know what? Just how Joe Pesci did in Lethal Weapon, I think it was three or two, when he said, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> catchphrase. <laughs> Lou said, you know what? I'm gonna come up with a catchphrase too. So that's when Lou came up with, I'm gonna kick your freaking ass. <laughs> <laughs> so our mindset was to be sort of like the bullyish type of three stooges. That's why on the part where I said, you run around town like a sucker and hey, eat. Hey. Me and my boys hey. can't be beat. No matter where you go, we can smell like gas, and we're gonna kick your freaking <laughs> ass. <laughs> I made, that up like, I made that up like an hour before we went on the set. But wow. the Hudlin brothers, Reggie Warrington, they embraced us and they allowed us to have free reign and creativity. So we would meet every morning and we wrote the scripts. Hey guys, we did this. And we changed up everything, everything. And they said, keep it, hmm. keep it. And they said, no, Kid Play was doing the same thing. Everybody started changing up. And it was wonderful. I mean, the synergy with everyone together. It's so funny, during the script, the late Robin Harris, he was such a genius. It was like, during the script, you see everybody's lines, but where Robin Harris' lines were, it was empty, it was blank. Mm -hmm. It was like, Reggie, what? there's no lines for Larry. No lines for Robin. And Reggie was like, you'll see. He just improvised everything. Everything you see Robin do, he just did it on the set. Classic. We are, but I mean, we came so close, all of us. In between shoots, Martin was just a young, mm -hmm. up and coming com comedian. So we'd leave all of us, go down to the comedy store and Hollywood Boulevard. So we tried his routines and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And we had a sense that it was magical. Originally, Kid and Play was meant for um, the Fresh Prince and Jazz yeah, and Jeff. Yeah, that's and true. no, yeah, Kid and Play that. just knocked it out. And we all yeah. knew each other from touring. But this was just natural energy. Tisha, that was family. AJ jumped in, and everything was just magical. It was a I magical moment, man. I'll never forget. I have it. two questions. It's yeah. not DJ Baggers. I gotta ask the questions no they want to know. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about the sexy 80s hairdo here, brother. <laughs> <laughs> How did you keep that so fly? Man, let me look. <laughs> I'll tell you right, right now. If they bring Jerry Curls back to style, I'll be the first in line. <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, I, love my I was like, shh, back every hey. time. Yeah. And you know, I was always able to tell the weather with my curls. Mm -hmm. If I'm down south, I'm like, oh no, it's gonna fall this way. But if I'm in LA, oh, it's gonna fall <laughs> this <laughs> way. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love my curls. and see, back then, everybody had Jerry curls. Right. But because yeah. our image everybody. was twice personified, it just made it bigger. That's but that was the thing, and I loved it, man. And my headband thing, that was my thing. 
because yes, you <laughs> was. Yeah, because back then yeah, I, I followed groups like Van Halen, Rat, yeah. Poison. I was a rocker. I, that's that was my thing, you know, with the ripped shirts. Yeah. That's what I followed. Right, right, right. Yeah. So back then they didn't know how to really take us. We got turned down by every major label because wow. we we dressed like rockers. Mm -hmm. We produced and wrote R and B and pop. But because of Brooklyn, we had a hip hop attitude. Yeah. So they didn't know how to perceive us. We was way ahead of it. So we got turned up by every label because we just come in wow. different. And then our co manager Steve Sam, said, you know what, man? You guys are trying to be different too too much. Why don't you create some groups of your own? This way we won't put as much pressure on it and then you get attention. And that's when um that's when the first group we put together was dancers that was in our neighborhood and we uh, co wrote and produced Roxanne Roxanne. And that was our first one that just went through the roof where our beloved brother's UTFO. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. the mindset was, it, it, I mean, it took off so crazy, we didn't even know. And that was the, one of the beginnings of rap, you know? And that wasn't our first hit. Our first hit we did, we co-wrote a song called Basketball for Curtis Blood. Mm. Sure did. Yeah. Um, that was our first one. Yeah. Yeah. Who's was all in the sure same clip. Us, Curtis, Run, DMC, Russell, uh, Rick Rubin, we all, LL, we all started together. And then after that, my brother B said, you know something? And that was B's idea of Roxanne, Roxanne. Mm -hmm. And B finally, he said, you know something? There's a void in the music industry. Let's find a young girl that can sing the way everyone can emulate her style, but there's a void, there's no Latin, it's doing nothing. Let's, let's find a Puerto Rican girl and do this damn thing. So Mike Hughes, who worked with us at our equipment, he used to go to this club called The Fun House. Mm -hmm. And he found this young girl who lied to us at the time. She said she was 18, but she was really 16. Uh -huh. And we said, okay, we'll bring it down. So here she is, little Lisa, coming to our Brooklyn basement, and you know, we're there, and she's like, what the hell, I do a smell or something? She's a little nervous <laughs> right now, you know? But then um, I said, sing something, and she sang something that was a little off. So I said, sing this. I said, well, you know, I know Shana Issa. I said, for your eyes only, only for you. And I had to sing that, and she sang. I said, guys, this is our stuff. And at the time, I think one of our favorite groups was Duran Duran, and so we came up with Lisa Lisa. Mm -hmm. and the guys mm -hmm. yeah that's yeah, true yeah. 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 double name and then Lisa and Skull Jam so the first thing was Lisa and Skull Jam with Full Force my brother B wrote I want if I take you home and back then no one was doing a drum beat with the bass line the beat dun 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 beat dun 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 nobody was doing that so he married that together and I wonder if I take you home took off took off yeah it took off I mean it was just exploded so it's now there was a bidding war between Warner Brothers and Columbia on the guys that created Roxanne Roxanne and Lisa Lisa mm -hmm. you know wow. and the rest is history I mean there's so much history you know and uh, mm -hmm. it was a golden a golden time you know that's a golden time before we get to my girl Akanda one more question for my guy Paul because I gotta ask give us the craziest Groupie story that you have. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. You really want that? Yeah. 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 Did they, did they <laughs> hide in your hotel room? Did they come? You know? All of the above. Oh. Okay. Um, there's, there's so many. Well, there's so many because. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, yeah, because back then nobody was doing what Full Force was doing. By that I mean we would do a move called the Alice Sandwich. The Alice Sandwich is, you know, we bring a girl on stage, she'd be in front, Lou would come behind her, I'd pick them both up, Ooh. and their legs would be dang, we just humping. Right? Hey. Because one of our biggest records was a song called Alice, I Want You to Me that I wrote because I was a Honeymooners fanatic. Yeah, but then after that, mm. we would do the Paul Anthony strip. I and, know. Right. Are you, you going to show us a little sign? No. <laughs> 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 so, you know, I was stripped down in my bikini briefs. I do mandatory bodybuilding poses. Nobody was doing that. Right. And then after that, Lou would say, okay, we're staying at the Marriott Hotel. We're doing so-and-so, so-and-so. Damn so -and -so. it. Yeah. But for me, one of the craziest, you know, it's like, there's so many. Like, you know, the night, you know, maybe the night, because once again, I used to pattern myself off the rockers. And the rockers was beasts when they was on tour. All right, so one of my good friend, Ace, um, um, Paul Stanley from Rock Group Kiss, you know, would talk. So, you know, I, I see how they would do things. So there's times where, you know, you know, the nights, there'd be nights where it would be a, it was a, be a body count, you know? Ooh, so it'd be like, okay, cool. We took, I, took, I took care of seven women that night. I'm hey. chill when I get to the next town. So I get to the next town, I want to chill. And I'm like, oh, man, I'm going to chill, relax. But then you open up the hotel room, 
and the room really talks to you. Wow. Yeah, the, 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 the cushions of the couch, they started flexing. Yeah, nigga. You know what I'm saying? The people said in the room would turn my way. Yeah. The toilet paper would unroll. Yeah. We get it all. She'd just be talking to you. You know what I mean? But on the real side, it'd be crazy stuff. It wouldn't be finding the key in your room, you get in your room. The, when it was full of women and wow. you know sometimes when we do overseas we have to yeah. rush to the to the bus all kind of stuff like that wow. yeah, but it was wonderful and once again being managers of our artists we had to do these distinction yeah. uh, lisa would be on a pop tour and utfo would be on a rap tour we'd be on an r&b tour so we'd be bouncing around which yeah. we make sure because we manage all our artists as well you know right. so yeah i mean there's many many that's stories. amazing yeah, yeah, thank amazing. you so much for that <laughs> blessing us with that miss lakanda